Hi everyone, I am Sramana and welcome back to my channel Sparkling Future. Today we will see what is Spark. Okay? Before starting with today's topic, I request all of you to subscribe to my channel and also please like, share, comment and hit the bell icon for the latest video notifications. Thank you. So this video is mainly for answering the interview question. Okay, so it's not going into very deep discussion about what is Spark. But if in a interview, if someone asks you what is Spark, how much you should say, like what all contents you should cover. Okay, that we are going to see in this video. So Spark is an unified computing engine for parallel data processing in a distributed environment. Okay, means that. Uh, it is because uh, in the previous video we have just seen Hadoop versus Spark, right? So this uh, Spark is lightning speed computing engine that is because of the in-memory compute uh, computing and it's open source and also it has uh, Spark ecosystem uh, means uh, uh, it has all these features, okay? So Spark has various APIs like Spark SQL, streaming, machine learning and uh, graphs. So using the Spark SQL, you can perform SQL-like queries. Like you can join the tables by using simple SQL queries. You can you can do select operations, and you can work with Hive from Spark without even logging into the Hive database. And also, uh, data frame the the Spark main um, abstraction in Spark SQL is the data frame. So using data frames, you can perform all types of table operations by using this uh, SQL code. So that is the benefit of using this Spark SQL. And streaming is for processing the real time data. It's near real time, we should say, okay? But uh, almost real time data we can process using the streaming Spark streaming APIs. And for processing machine learning, we have Spark machine learning API. And for graphs, for any graphs related uh, work, uh, mm, what is that uh, products, so we can implement that using Spark graphs. So these are the various APIs available in Spark. Okay, so next one coming to the programming means uh, you can write the Spark code in either Scala, Java, Python, and R means uh, not everyone will be familiar with any of any uh, like java or something python right so whoever like if i know scala i'll work in scala if i know r then i can write the same code in r okay so uh, uh, it's it's like language independent so whoever knows uh, they, they at least if they are comfortable they can start writing the code in this scala java python and r uh, languages and Coming to the engine, Spark uses Spark Core engine. Okay, Spark Core is the basic computation engine which is available in the Spark ecosystem. On top of this Spark Core engine only, you have the Spark SQL engine, streaming, in, streaming, machine learning, graphs, all these ecosystems. I mean, all these APIs are built on the basic Spark Core engine. Okay, so this is the engine that executes the job that we are submitting. So even if you are submitting any job in Spark SQL, it will again convert that into RDD and that RDDs will be executed in the Spark Core engine. And so main function of the Spark Core is to read and uh, split the data across multiple clusters, uh, multiple nodes, I mean to say, and perform the operations that we ask you to perform. And also on top of this, uh, it has these many libraries, Spark, SQL, Streaming, Machine Learning and Graphs. So we can perform all these set of operations. Okay, and coming to the resource management, uh, we will discuss about Spark uh, architecture in a detailed uh, video. Okay, so for uh, cluster uh, uh, like nodes, uh, like uh, what is the memory and how many tasks we have how many executors or nodes we need. Based on that, the resource management can be done in. Uh, Spark itself has standalone uh, server um, scheduler, uh, which can uh, perform all these resource management itself. And if you want, you can use YARN for Hadoop. If you have uh, HDFS as the base, right, then you can use YARN as resource manager for your cluster and Apache Mesos is there. So all these can be used in the resource management. 
and coming to the storage part if we are having hadoop layer right in the spark uh, project then we can use hdfs as a storage or amazon s3 and anything based on on top of which we are using spark right we can use that storage and coming to the nosql spark supports all these nosqls hbase cassandra mongodb cochb and there are many other and spark supports all these nosql databases so what is this ecosystem means why we are telling all this is spark is a single engine right it's a core engine but it can support all these things like we can write language in you can write it write in any of the four languages we can use any of these apis in the in a single um, file okay i mean to say so let's say you have a file you are reading that as a rdd which means that rdd is a abstraction of spark core and immediately you can convert that rdd to a data frame and you can apply sql queries on top of it or in the same way you can create a uh, like uh, you can read uh, uh, real time data you can apply some machine learning algorithms you can apply some graph related uh, code on top of it in a single file we can do that by just importing the required libraries so that is the beauty of spark here so you have it's like a one single set you have and you can access multiple tools which you require if you are doing the same with some other technology then you need to have multiple tools but here in spark you get all these things as a single package okay that's why it is very easy to use and even the storage resource manager so uh, it's not like uh, platform independent okay it is and uh, and whichever if if you are using in amazon you can use amazon related tools for resource manager storage no sql anything so it's it's not like any limitations like um, no limit i mean there there will be of course some limitations but based on the storage and the lower lower level storage layer that you have on top of it if you are installing spark right you can get all the benefits from the storage and spark itself has some more benefits you can use all these together to work with your code very well where you can uh, process the data very quickly by using the uh, features of all these layers so that is the beauty of spark and uh, just to, to tell about the features about this spark right so it's open source spark is open source okay and it's a hundred times faster than map reduce it we, we can say it's lightning speed okay when we are working with uh, like a lot of data you can clearly see the uh, processing time difference between spark and the map reduce that's because of the in memory processing and because this is uh, having this apis we can work with sql we can do real time data analysis we can apply machine learning algorithms uh, we can do graphs and all that okay and uh, coming to the installation part uh, we can do st uh, we can install spark on standalone mode uh, because it has standalone scheduler itself okay so um, it doesn't actually require any other extra storage or uh, resource manager uh, uh, any external things okay it itself has but we should have some but it can ha it can manage uh, the capacity will be very less because it's in the standalone mode so because of that reason usually most of the companies use some other layer like hadoop or amazon or mesos they will use on top of it they will install spark and they will use the uh, all these features okay and second one is distribution mode which is using the yarn or any other resource manager that is called as distribution mode so in these two uh, in uh, two types we can in these two modes we can do installation standalone and distribution and the main uh, advantages of uh, spark is um, it is very fast data faster data processing we will use and it has some very good features called dag rdds and other features is because of that spark is very uh, popular these days so this if this is the basic about spark okay if someone asks you what is spark you can just say uh, definition and you can explain why it is why it is we are calling this as a engine uh, what are the um, features it has and what is the ecosystem that spark provides so this is sufficient for that okay hope uh, this is clear to you friends thank you for watching the video Please subscribe to my channel for more interesting learnings. Thank you.